A very good day to you. This is the ministry of triumph in Christ. What does the Lord say for this time? I am refreshing what has become weary in your life. I am setting you free from the weariness that hinders you from progressing in your life. This is the time to receive my refreshing and renewal. There will be new life again. There will be new hope again. There will be new passion again. There will be new strength again. Hallelujah. Maybe you feel like you are a plant that feels like withering. You feel like your growth is stunted, whether spiritual growth or career growth. You feel like you can't lift up your head high anymore. You feel like there's no headway in your life. You feel like you are going nowhere. Or you feel like your future is bleak. Whatever it is, this is just an analogy. The Lord is watering you. The Lord has a good news for you. He is watering you afresh and anew again. Let's go to the scripture now, Jeremiah 31, verse 23 to 25. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says, When I bring them back from captivity, the people in the land of Judah and its towns will once again use these words. The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. People will live together in Judah and all its towns, farmers and those who move about with their flocks. I will refresh the weary and satisfy the faint. See the word refresh there? Now the word refresh here is interesting. It's rawah in Hebrew. It means to fill with abundance of water or to breathe new life. Interestingly, this word rawah is from the word ruach, meaning breath of God or Spirit of God. You see, it is the breath of God or the Spirit of God that can truly refresh you all in all. It is the breath of God or the Spirit of God that can breathe new life and fill you with fresh new hope and strength in your life as you look ahead in your life. This is the time for you to receive. Receive all this, especially if you've been feeling weary and tired in your soul or if you've been feeling hopeless and passionless in your life. Now, the context of Jeremiah 31, verse 23 to 25 here is that the Lord had spoken about the day when His people would say, The Lord bless you, you prosperous city, you sacred mountain. Now, not only would they be restored spiritually and materially in every sense of the word, they would also be refreshed. And as a result, you will find new passion again. You will find new hope again. You have the strength, a new strength for you to look ahead in your life. I declare that greater things are ahead of you. Amen. Now, how do you apply these verses at this juncture of your life? Now, the Lord is setting you free from the captivity, quote unquote, that has kept you in your chains and bondage, quote unquote. Maybe recently, it's like your progress in your life has been hindered. Or it's like there's just no headway, there's no breakthrough. It's like there's just no way out from whatever that you are stuck with. But today, the Lord has a good news for you. He has spoken that this is your time to break free. This is your time to declare, the Lord bless me, I am a prosperous city, I am a sacred mountain, just as the Lord declared over His people those days. Let's move on to another part of the scripture, Isaiah 44, verse 1 to 4 now. Here the Lord said, But now listen to me, Jacob my servant, Israel my chosen one. The Lord who made you and helps you says, Do not be afraid, O Jacob my servant, O dear Israel my chosen one, for I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate your parched fields, and I will pour out my spirit on your descendants and my blessing on your children. They will thrive like watered grass, like willows on a river bank. Do you see the statement, the Lord who made you and helps you? You see, made you here is past tense, but helps you here is present tense. Do you see that? Yes, He has created you, but now He is continually helping you, present tense. He is a very present help when you need Him. And the Lord also said, I will pour out water to quench your thirst and to irrigate, to water your parched fields. 
So will you surrender any area of your life that you feel dry? Let Him water you right now. Let Him pour His living water on your life. Yes, in your spirit, in your soul, even in your physical body. Even though these words are specifically for the people of God those days, but it applies to you even today. You are God's beloved. You are His sons and daughters. And today, He wants to pour out His Spirit upon you afresh and anew again. And see what happens next. They will thrive like watered grass, like willows on a riverbank. Now, what is this word thrive here? This word is samak in Hebrew. It means to spring up, to spring forth, to grow again, to be full of life again. And I want to declare that, let this be so for your life as well. The Lord causes you to samak, to thrive. Amen. So as we get ready for the second half of this year, the Lord is releasing these words to you. Receive afresh and anew. And I declare that in the second half of this year, you are going to thrive. You are going to see yourself doing greater things. Now let me share with you five keys to stay afresh and anew in your spirit. These are five tips for you. Number one, pray in the Spirit often. I cannot emphasize any further how important praying in the Spirit is. Praying in the Spirit. Pray until you know that you are so full of His Spirit. Yes, pray till you are overflowing. And this living waters in you flowing in and out of you and touches many lives. Isaiah 28, verse 11 to 12, For with stammering lips and another tongue, he will speak to his people, to whom he said, This is the rest with which you may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. See the word weary there, and see the word refreshing there. Amen. Number two, meditate on what the Lord has spoken to you. Now, as you pray in the Spirit, as you read the Word of God, the Lord can put thoughts on you. The Lord can speak to you. The Lord can even show you visions. What do you do with all this? Habakkuk 2, verse 2 to 3 say, Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. So write it down. Yes, even in modern days, your electronic tablets. Or write it on a piece of paper or type it into your smartphone. Whatever way you are going to write, write it. Let's continue. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It means whatever that the Lord has spoken to you, He will see to it that it will come to pass, as long as you believe it, you walk in it, and you act on it. You see, the Lord is still speaking to His people even right now. The Lord is still showing fresh new things to His people even right now. Our part is to hear Him and to receive from Him. Number three, talk to the Lord on what to add and what to cut down in your life. In other words, there are certain things in your life that you should add on, and there are also certain things in your life that you should cut down or delete it altogether. For example, you can quote-unquote add on the good thoughts in your life. And you can quote-unquote cut down or delete altogether all the negatives in your life. Proverbs 15, verse 13 to 15, A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance, but by sorrow of the heart the spirit is broken. The heart of him who has understanding seeks knowledge, but the mouth of fools feeds on foolishness. All the days of the afflicted are evil, but he who is of a merry heart has a continual feast. You see all the contrast here? So add on what is good in your life. Cut down or cut off what is not good in your life. Yes, this even applies to who you friend with. Yes, even who you do business with or who you work with. Number four, get rid of your physical and emotional clutter. In other words, clear the clutter in your life. Now, what is a clutter? It can be defined as disorderliness, or it can be defined as everything jumbled up, or it can even be defined as holding on to too many things, so much so that it hinders your moving forward. So what it means here is to clear what you need to clear. Don't hold on to your clutter. When you should let go, you let it go. Yes, so that new things, fresh things, will come your way. 
Isaiah 43, verse 18 to 19, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Hallelujah. Last but not least, number five, clear your mind from worry and entanglement. It means to cast all your care, your concerns, and your worries to the Lord because He cares for you. Stay clear from whatever that is sinful or whatever that causes you to fall into sin. 1 Peter 5, verse 6 to 8, Therefore, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that He may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. So this is the part about casting all your care, your concerns, and your worries to the Lord. Next, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. You see, the enemy cannot devour you unless you allow him to. That's why seeking whom he may devour. In other words, the enemy is looking around to see who he can devour. So stay clear from any form of temptation. Flee from all this. Stay pure before the Lord. Stay clear before the Lord. You know why? Because sin is a baggage. Sin will hold you down. Let it go. And as a result, you will feel light and easy, afresh and anew again, ready for what's ahead of you. Let us pray. Oh Lord God, you are refreshing what has become weary in our lives. You are setting us free from whatever that hinders us from progressing in our lives. We thank you, oh Lord God. We receive your refreshing and renewal right now. We receive fresh new hope in our lives right now. We receive a fresh new passion and zeal in our lives right now. We receive a fresh new strength for what's ahead in our lives right now. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So this is what the Lord wants to tell us today. And the Lord is preparing us for what's in the second half of this year. Yes, be refreshed, be renewed, and you shall thrive. Amen. Just as what the Lord has spoken today. Thank you for watching. God bless you. Take good care. Have an awesome day.